Hey, Mike, uh, Vinny with the Review Journal. Um, obviously, today and uh, this whole weekend, uh, there was kind of a theme, offensive line uh, defense. Um, was it the way that the draft unfolded or kind of what the preference was coming in? Uh, I think it's a combination of both. Uh, you know, I, I think we did want to address uh, the offensive line. I think we've done it consistently uh, since making some moves in the offseason. Really happy with Leatherwood. Uh, the kid we got in the seventh round is awesome, uh, Morrissey. I mean, he was a walk-on at Pitt that ended up starting for four years, being a two-time captain. The senior bowl called him the day before the game. He flew in and played most of the game at center and guard. Um, he's just one of those overachievers. You know, I, I, he won the same award that Hunter Renfro won a couple of years ago as the top former walk-on in the country. So we love the two offensive linemen. Uh, I told you guys last night we knew we had to get better on defense, and I thought the board matched up with what we needed to do. Um, I thought one interesting note today was that we had no in I, I had no intention of going here today. We had no intention of, of trying to get Tyree Gillespie, but at a certain point he stood out like a sore thumb on our board, and. Uh, Again, it wasn't about need. It was about what we thought was a really good football player available much later than we thought he'd be available. So we traded up and got Gillespie. Uh, so we're really excited about that. But that's a long way to say, yeah, I think we knew we had to address our defense. We had to do it on all three levels. We're happy we were able to. And we, and we also augmented that young offensive line some more. So uh, very happy with the way it unfolded. Like talking about the defense, as we've seen the last couple of years, it's not real easy for young guys, especially in the secondary, to come in and, and contribute right away. How much of the improvement on defense is going to be based on the Arnett's and Mullins and the guys who picked the last couple of years sort of stepping their game up this year and being the players you thought you think they can be? Yeah, I think that's a huge part of it. I, I think there's, uh, you know, I've talked to, to some of our guys from the last two draft class, you know, especially last year, like, okay, you know, our production has got to be better from that group a year ago. Uh, the guys from two year, years ago have been pretty good football players, but uh, we've got to get a bounce from that group last year on both sides of the football. Uh, in the defensive backfield, you know, I think John Abrams is going to have a big year. He's in here working his tail off. Uh, same thing with Arnett. We're looking for a bounce from those guys. It would be great if we can keep them healthy and getting, play, getting them to play at the level we expect. And then you combine it with the young guys we got in the draft, you know, we're pretty excited about where we could be in the secondary. Hey, Mike, it's Tashawn Reed from The Athletic. I know it's kind of hard to know what you're going to get out of the rookies until training camp in the season gets here. But just looking at the roster on paper, how do you feel about the blend that you have of young guys and also veterans that you have on the roster? Yeah, I, I think, you know, you go into an off season uh, and you admit that you're not very good on one side of the ball and you've got to get better. So, um, you know, it's been a process since free agency, you know, trying to get better at all three levels. And I think we've got kind of an interesting mix on you look at the defensive line and, you know, we've got all you got Solomon Thomas and we, you know, we've got uh, David Irving and, you know, we've got Phylon and, you know, we've got Quentin Jefferson uh, and then you kind of come compare that and we we've got Malcolm Coons and Ngakwe so there, there's a whole bunch of new guys uh, on the defensive side of the ball at level one level two I think we augmented uh, with the draft pretty well so excited with the Virginia Tech kid Diablo and then you guys have already talked about the level three changes you know we've we've got an awful lot of defensive backs competing mostly young guys you know, we brought in Rasul Douglas, but we're pretty young back there. So to me, that's kind of a challenge is can the young guys play up to a level we need them to? Can you, I can't hear anything. It's breaking up. Going with 
Is it Mike, good? this is Hondo Carpenter from Sports Illustrated. Hey, Hondo, I, I, I apologize. I could not hear one word of the last question. So that I, wasn't me. So no, I, I know, I know. I'm just saying, apologizing to whoever it was because I couldn't hear a thing. Hondo, please go. I asked you last night about the fact you got guys who are versatile and guys that are high character. So I'm curious, as you sit there as the general manager in that chair, how excited are you after free agency and a draft that you've accumulated so many high character and versatile guys for the 2021 Raiders? We're, Honda, we're excited about that. Uh, you know, the first press conference I had here with John Gruden when I was first hired, we talked about foundation players. And I think, I think when we stick to that prescription, we're pretty good. And we got a bunch of foundation guys. You know, we got guys that love football, have a passion for the game, want to work hard, want to practice hard. We focused on that in free agency. We focused on it in the draft. I think John and I are kind of joined at the hip. You know, that's the kind of guys we want in here, guys that are similar to us. You know, you come in here for a reason because you love it. You know, it's a privilege to be here, in my opinion, and John's opinion. And, you know, I got I was on the, I was on the phone with Jimmy Morrissey and I thought the kid was going to jump through the roof. He was so excited. I mean, that's what we want. That's the excitement we want. Um, love the foundation type players, captains, guys that love to play ball, love the versatility that you're talking about. The guy, Nate Hobbs today. People don't know much about Nate Hobbs. One of the most tough and physical corners in the entire draft. Why do we like him? Can play inside can play outside, play special teams. He'll come in and compete his tail off. So th that's kind of what we feel good about right now is that we we think we have a pretty good mix, and, and most of the guys here really love it. Hey, Mike, Jerry McDonald. Uh, when you look at the, all the guys you picked, um, I think the, the fewest games one of them has played is 39. Uh, you got other guys over four, you know, close to 50. Um so much experience, how much, you know, in terms of college games, how much does that help as far as hitting the ground running? And because you, you're still not positive what your off season is going to entail. So what does that, how does that help get, get, get them going faster? It's a really good question. And, and the reason it is, it, it's a, in this COVID year, two years in a row, right? With all the uncertainties, you guys have heard me talk about all the uncertainties. How do you collect information? How do you, and what John and I talked about, leading up to this draft is let's hit it down the middle. Okay. Let's get guys that love ball. Let's get guys that we've seen a bunch of their tape that their college coaches stand on a table for that we know are going to come in here committed to play at the highest level they can play at. So um, all that tape, all that history, uh, the ability to talk to coaches about kids that were there for three or four or five years and played 30, 40, 50 games meant a lot this year to us. Hey, Mike, this is Vic. I wanted to follow up on the uh, the cornerbacks. Um, what does Douglas bring to the mix, and what is your level of interest in uh, Richard Sherman? Uh, what did you say, Rasul Douglas? What does he bring to the mix? Yeah, and what's also your level of interest in uh, Richard Sherman? Uh, Rasul Douglas, we think, is a veteran. I mean, when I was doing preseason games for the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, he played for the Eagles. He, his ball skills were outstanding at West Virginia. Love the way he competed. Uh, and we think he's going to bring a level of professionalism, toughness, competition. And I like the fact that when the ball's in the air, he thinks it is. It's his. As far as Richard Sherman, I really don't have any comment about that. Hey, Mike, can I ask you, you talked a lot, as you just mentioned, alluded to just a second ago about the challenges the, the last two years with the COVID so situation and all that, kind of a two-part question. Uh, just were you surprised that, that it went maybe as smoothly as it did this year, learning from last year with the guys you got and just kind of how, you know, as you mentioned, hitting it down the middle and, and so forth. And then just uh, Alex and, and his visit to uh, Las Vegas and seeing the, uh, the uh, facilities and just his impressions, your impressions of him visiting uh, the facilities there in Vegas. Yeah, I, you know, the, the first part of that as far as just hitting it down the middle and uh, it really did mean a lot. And I think John had a consistent philosophy. I had a consistent philosophy. And together, uh, it was all about just making sure we felt comfortable with all these young men. And we do. 
Uh, as far as Leatherwood is concerned, he had a pretty good trip here. And uh, I only got to spend probably 10 minutes with him. I mean, this is a busy weekend for the for, for in this building. But um, we had him out to dinner the other night. I couldn't be there because I was actually sitting in here, uh, obviously. Um, but everybody fell in love with the kid. And he's very serious. He's a yes, sir, no, sir guy. He comes from the infrastructure at Alabama. He's used to the structure of being in a football building, and what those demands are at the highest level. So what I liked about him was he was about business. You know, the, one of the first things he said to John and I was basically, hey, I don't care where you all play me. I, I don't care. Just put me in. I'll play free safety. Let's, let's go. I want to be part of something special. And that was – we didn't even ask him about playing right tackle. He just volunteered it because I think he understood, and he's a smart young man. He's like, hey, all those rumors, like, no, I'm, I'm wherever you want me to play. So I think we were all – Tom Cable spent a lot of time with him. Uh, we were just all really excited to meet him and see his demeanor, which was, hey, I'm all about ball. Mike, uh, when, when we talked to, to Nate Hobbs, there was definitely a presence about him. Uh, you kind of felt it just even talking to him on, on Zoom. And you mentioned uh, moving inside and playing inside and bringing the necessary toughness. Do you guys envision him starting there early on, or is it kind of a wide-open thing for him? Yeah, it's kind of wide open, and that's what I like about it. And Coach Miles and I talked about it this morning because he was kind of one of our targets heading into today. Um, and what Coach Miles really liked was the versatility of he's a six-foot corner that's played outside that ran 4-4-5 four, four, and was probably the most physical corner in the draft. And we believe we can move him inside and he can compete inside also. So that was one of the big things with him. And I'll tell you what was cool is about, I don't know, six weeks ago, one of my scouts came to me and said, you know, we got a guy that I think needs a higher grade here. And, you know, I want you to get your eyes on him. And so I put Nate Hobbs on, and I was like, hmm, does this guy play hard? Does this guy compete? And I think the prevailing attitude was, what's he going to run? And he ran 4-4-5, four, four, and, uh, you know, our entire building kind of was on the Nate Hobbs train because he just – you love his tape, and we were hoping he'd run a certain level, and he did. When you got an offensive coach, head coach like John, was it difficult at all to keep him from wanting to grab a skill position player – in this, you know, in any of the picks, was that, is he itching at all? Yeah, you know, John, I love John. He, he's, <laughs> he was so good. I mean, we went into day two and we attacked the defensive side of the ball and he was more excited than I was. Okay. And we came back in here today and does Don, does John want to talk about a quarterback or a wide out? Of course he does. Like, and is he going to walk over and point at the board and say, well, Mike, well, you, you got a grade on this wide out. Why wouldn't we go take him here? And I love that. And that's what it's supposed to be all about, right, is, is con conversation amongst two people that have done a whole lot of homework on these guys and what makes us better. And at the end of the day, you're right, John Gruden's an offensive guy. But what did we do all weekend? We tried to help our defense get better, and I give him a ton of credit for that. He was all in. He was excited. You should have heard him on the phone with the kids. I mean, there's nobody better than John Gruden on the phone. It's just awesome. So um, I could not have been happier with the way John supported the whole thing this weekend, and he knew, just like I knew, we got a long way to go on defense. Hey, Mike, it's Paul here. Um Obviously, you're, you're happy with your draft and you feel good about it right now. But now that it's done and you still got the UDFAs to, to get in the building and things, what now is the biggest question facing you going forward? Boy, it's, that's a hard one. Uh, I think the, the, the most important thing, the biggest question right now is just still the uncertainties with off-season training program. You know, I think everybody around the league feels great today, right? You, you, hopefully, you all, everybody got a little better today and yesterday and the day before. There's a lot of optimism. But we all want to get back to normal. We all want to get all the rookies in the building. It's a little frustrating. You know, we're allowed 20 people at rookie minicamp. I mean, it's just – it's still frustrating. Um, we still can't meet in person. You know, we can have hundreds of thousands of fans in Cleveland, but for some reason we can't meet in person in, in, in these buildings. Uh, but we need to get back to normal, and, and we need to challenge these young players to get better. And I think that's the biggest question mark I have is, ju is just, hey, 
You know, when can we get back to normal? Let's get on the field. Let's see what these kids can bring to the table for us. And our coaches are so fired up downstairs. They're chomping at the bit. So without saying, you know, I'm I'm worried about this position or I'm worried about that position, this is more about getting 90 guys on the practice field and getting to work and see if we can build something special together. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for putting putting up with me for three days.